Hello, you beautiful people out there. What is going on? This is your friend Bernard coming just fast with another predecessor video. And today we are going to be talking about the roadmap that they showed in their Discord and on Twitter here just recently. We're going to break it down real quick for those of you who don't want to read it. I'm going to try and make this video as succinct as possible and just kind of go over the main details. If you guys want to read the whole post, you guys can do so. I'm going to leave a link down in the comment section below. So I want to tackle the first and foremost right now, and that is the road to early access. If you guys have not heard, early access is confirmed for late this year, 2022. What does that mean? What might we expect? Well, we could expect it to be on PC only for now. However, as you guys are seeing on the screen right now, they are teasing console and they're saying that console development is well underway to stay tuned for more later this year. So who knows? maybe they will release an early access on console as well but personally i'm not getting my hopes up because they've told us time and time again that they want to make sure the game is absolutely perfect on pc first before throwing it out to a larger audience on console they realize that console is really important for the life of this game and make sure this game has a really nice lifespan and they want to make sure that it's absolutely perfect when it's released and as you guys noticed from all the tests and all the stuff that they've been ramping up they are kind of perfectionists over at Omega Studio, so I don't blame them. So that's a big thing, but also they've got new heroes and a UI overhaul on the way, which is what I want to focus on. They've also got some interesting stuff like MMR. They're going to be adding internal MMR to the game. We're going to see how that affects it and how they do it. They're going to have to be really smart in how they implement it to make sure it runs well, to make sure the games are very balanced and everybody's having fun. They're going to do small adjustments to the cameras, to the FOVs, to player onboarding audio, the item system in terms of user interface is what they really want to focus on and as well projectiles just feeling better in the game but the big thing that i want to cover is the ui overhaul before we get to the ui overhaul we're going to talk about the new hero that they teased codename huntress this vampire hunter has traveled here for only one reason we will share more info in the coming weeks and months and the only thing they show us is this crossbow weapon which to me screams that this is going to be some sort of carry uh, that's what this screams to me is that this is going to be the weapon of the character codename huntress that's a feminine word feminine ending so we can assume that's going to be a female character and is it going to be some sort of lore related to countess eventually we don't know countess is not in the game yet but that's what we might be led to believe if you guys are longtime paragon fans and you guys follow the lore so anyway this hero is completely original completely new and this is one that omada studios is making from scratch so really really excited to see what's going to go on there now let's talk about this UI overhaul because there's actually a lot of stuff here and I don't know if you guys noticed from this quick little image but if you've actually taken a look the first thing that strikes me is the health bar and the mana bar being in the bottom left corner underneath the chat dialogue which is nice because if you are actually communicating with your teammates and not flaming each other which unfortunately is probably going to be the other way around for the most part. But if you're actually communicating, you got your text right there. Plus you have everything you need to look at. You have your health bar. You have your mana bar. You have all the information you need, the gold, etc. And then on the other corner, you have a new way of showing the items. So it's less cluttered. It takes up less space, smaller icons. You can clearly see which items are your actives. You can clearly see which items are going to be your passives. The number of slots is very intriguing to me because I see, you know, one slot, which I guess is going to be your deliberate slot for your crest. You guys remember the crest that would level up after you've completed certain tasks, depending on your role. You have that all the way on the left. You have a few actives there, it looks like, or it could also be passive items going into the active slots. And then you have more slots all the way to the right that are all empty, as a matter of fact, right now. But in total, if you count, you have one for your crest, two, three, and then you have five more at the end there. So you have eight slots in total. So I don't know if they're going to let you have even more items. I don't know if that's just because it's a work in progress image and they kind of just left that there and they didn't really take the time to count. I don't know what that is, but that is of note and something that I noticed. And finally, probably the most eye catching is the roster of heroes that you see at the top. Eight out of those 10 hero frames are new heroes that we have yet to play in predecessor which means that they've either 
tease. They're either teasing that they're working on these heroes right now, or maybe they're already encoded and waiting for us to play them in the early access. So you have a lot of heroes here. You have Crunch, Decker, Aurora, Boris, and Greystone on the top right there that are new and we have not played yet in Predecessor. And then on the left, you have Grim.exe, Kwong, and Moragesh that we have yet to play in Predecessor. Kalari and Sparrow were playable in the last playtest. So eight out of these 10 heroes Absolutely never played before in Predecessor. Excited to see how they change the kit from their Paragon counterparts. Excited to see how they fit into the rest of the game with the new items as well. It's going to be a lot of fun. Really cool to see. Can't wait. So, yeah, this is super big. They are obviously trying to plan a big early access release again, like they said, end of this year. So holiday around this year. And console. More info on console later this year as well. Again, I'm not holding my breath. I'm not... I'm not I'm not thinking that they're going to release early access on console as well They're probably just gonna release an announcement that console is next on their list after early access launch That's my guess if I were a betting man But there you guys have it. That's the quick breakdown on this roadmap that they've released so far as of April 29th Hopefully we'll see more updates. We'll see if they have another stress test weekend before the uh, closed early access launches but we will see how that goes. And man, I'm just excited. I'm really I'm excited. I, I do think Predecessor is the fan favorite. And I think Omoda Studios, if this were a race, which a lot of people are kind of imagining in their heads right now, would be out in front right now as, we're, as we speak at this moment in time. I think it's the clear favorite. And I am in full support of what Omoda Studios is doing with this game. So hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, please consider dropping a like, subscribing, hitting, the, hitting that notification bell if you have not already so you guys never miss another video. And as always, make sure I have a wonderful day. Peace.